listening to KSEO Santa Cruz. Today we're going to be talking about abortion. This is about educating people to the truth about abortion. Our intent is never to make anyone feel guilty if they have had an abortion, but to help change the hearts and minds of women about the truth of abortion. I believe that life begins at conception, that life is sacred. Abortion is an attack on the family and the humanity that unites us all. So welcome to KSCO, Walter. We are so happy to have you here today to help us understand this dedicated, important work that you're doing. Georgia, I'm so happy to be here, and it's great to be a part of your program. Well, we are delighted to have you. Walter, is it true that you became a pro-lifer when you held your premature son who fit into the palm of your hand weighing only two pounds, one ounce at birth? Absolutely. And that's when God touched my heart in a way that I, I've never been the same since. It, it's one thing to, to hear about it. It's one thing to actually know about it. But it's another thing entirely to literally hold mm -hmm. what is supposed to be on the inside of a woman's womb in the palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. Walter, were you a pro-choice prior to that moment? No, not at all. I wasn't okay. pro-choice. I wasn't pro-life. Mm -hmm. You I just weren't engaged. Just not at all. Well, you became famous for your special uh, reaching out to the African Americans to end the genocide by abortion. Uh, that's how you really became famous, Walter. And we know that the numbers are very high in women of color. Uh, I'm delighted that someone is finally trying to reach out to these African American women. I don't know if you are familiar with Jesse Lee Peterson. Are you? Oh, absolutely. Well, I, yeah, we're, I we're never friends. have a day without listening to Jesse. And he is rebuilding, you know, the family by rebuilding the man and trying to help uh, educate the African Americans. So you are dedicated to work with these women. Why don't you tell us about the uh, going to your family planning specialist in, in Oakland that was an abortion business. Tell us about that, would you? Yeah, uh, one day I was in my, my office in church, and Georgia, I'm rarely there, uh, so this had to be a miracle. I was literally caught in my office uh, with a telephone call. So I took it, and the idea was to do this experiment. They thought it would be difficult for a woman to walk by her pastor, her priest, her deacon, her elder, you know, someone they'd recognize in the pulpit and walk into an abortion clinic. And they mm -hmm. thought that they would ask me because the clinic in Oakland was predominantly uh, being frequented by black Americans. Well, did you get a lot of flack from them, the pro-abortionists at that time? Uh, at, the, at the time, uh, no, they didn't pay much a attention to me. I was expecting to get some. But after a while, things changed dramatically. Things changed dramatically. Ultimately, Georgia... I ended up being uh, arrested, I ended up being tried, I ended up being convicted, I ended up being incarcerated. For 30 days and you paid a big fine, right? No, I refused to pay the fine. I, I was given a choice of paying a fine, I was given a choice of going on probation, and I just simply refused to do either one of them. Uh, we literally had videotape evidence in my trial that they were the ones that were violating my first amendment rights mm -hmm. and that I wasn't doing anything at all uh, to them. As a matter of fact, there was not one woman in my trial uh, that would have been a, a patient to uh, the abortion clinic. The only, the only person objecting was the executive director of the abortion. Mm -hmm. And she was the one that was caught on videotape live, uh -huh. on videotape. And it didn't matter. It didn't mm -hmm. matter. At that point during the trial, it became clear to me that I was going to go to jail no matter what. Well, that clinic closed in 2017, and that conviction was overturned, right? It was. It was. After I had been, um, you know, incarcerated in jail, we went to the Ninth Circuit. And the Ninth Circuit literally gave me a piece of a victory. So I'm awfully grateful for that. They couldn't believe what they were seeing in the pictures that are on videotape. And in the Ninth Circuit, the Oakland City Attorney literally admitted this. The attorney was asked, if you were running for governor in the state of California, and you had a pamphlet, and the pamphlet said, I'm pro-life, and here are my tenants, could you pass it out for an abortion clinic? 
And the church said, no, 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 they were so confident. No, you couldn't pass that out. Mm -hmm. Then, if you were uh, for a choice, you know, for abortion, mm -hmm. you have to use the word abortion. And the same thing, running for office, could you pass out your pamphlet? He said, oh, yeah, you could pass that Isn't out. Isn't that and amazing? You could hurt a pen drop. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you have a national ministry, and you and your wife go all over the country advocating for life. God bless you both, really, particularly among the black community. But I understand you just had your second visit to the White House. Why don't you tell us about that? Because we all love President Trump for being pro-life. President Trump is, is perhaps the most pro-life president we've had maybe ever. Yes, and so good. I was just thrilled to get the invitation. There had been so much work I had done in Washington, D.C., particularly during uh, his campaign. And a lot of things we did literally paid off. We had more black men vote for the president than any GOP candidate in years, Georgia, years. I know. And so it's very important. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got an invitation to the White House. Actually, we've been there twice. And so uh, this has really been quite a busy year for Lori and I, my wife and I. That's fantastic. Well, you know, there's a lot of talk about the defunding of Planned Parenthood. What is Title X? Do you know? Yeah, Title X. Ten? Title Ten funding. Okay, yeah. what is that? Well, Title Ten funding allows Planned Parenthood to receive money for their version of health care. And it's really simply a matter of funding the largest abortion provider in the country. And what we've done is made it absolutely clear that if, if a woman is looking for health care, there are other options available. She won't have to go without health care if that's what she's interested in. Well, that's very interesting because one of their arguments, Pastor, is that there would be no service services for women's health care when in fact your friend contacted me gave me a whole list right here in santa cruz which i can give to anybody that's interested there's a whole bunch of places that will give all women service other than abortion so that's just an argument they use they they, they use that argument and they're depending on those that follow them not to do their own homework they're depending on those that follow them to not think for themselves it's never been a secret this type of health care has been available for years and years and years and Planned Parenthood has just been guilty of misleading. Certainly have. Well uh, Walter we're going to take a quick two minute break. Please stay with us everybody we will come back and continue talking about abortion. Well, I am so thrilled to have you here sir and I wanted to ask you Walter Jesse Lee Peterson says that some blacks have just simply become godless people and that is why the abortion rate among blacks is so high what, what do you say about that and what changed that, Walter? Well, let me tell you, Jesse is, is actually right on the money, and Jesse's one of the few willing to even make that statement. Mm -hmm. But let me give you some background. In 1967, abortion was legal in California, in Colorado, and in Mississippi. But after so, we got to 1973, and we lost 6 million babies to be destroyed since then. But if you look back in 1967, 9% of the black adults of the age 25 had never been married. My goodness, we get up to 2012. And now we're looking at 36% of black mm -hmm. adults have never been married. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you begin to see a pattern. Uh, but today, it's flipped. It's mm -hmm. now 70%. Amazing. Hey, and so a lot has changed, and Jesse's just calling it out. He is, and I believe it started with uh, President Johnson's Great Society. They took the black man out of the home and put the government in the house with the woman to take care of those single uh, women's babies. And that began the demise, to me, of the black America, Walter. Tragic what happened there. It is tragic what happened there, and, and unfortunately, black America has suffered as a result of that. But the good news is that things are beginning to change as, as voices like Jesse Lee Peterson are being heard all over the country. Absolutely. Um, and here's the interesting thing, Walter. I get all kinds of arguments from people who say that we pro-life, we want all innocent babies to be protected against abortion, but when they're born, we turn our backs on them, we don't take care of them. And yet, Carol tells me there are 30 parents to every child being born waiting to adopt. Carol's telling you the truth. There is a long line, it's a list mm -hmm. of parent families uh, of all demographics waiting to have the opportunity to adopt adopt a child. It, it, it's not something that's hard to do. You just got to make that decision that when it comes time for you to make that decision, go ahead and make that. And then there are agencies. There are organizations that are designed 
to actually help the woman work through every bit. So that's the clear option available for everyone. You know, there's a lot of talk right now. They're trashing Judge Kavanaugh because they're all in a panic about abortions. And I told a little story today about Miss Christine Blasey Ford, who's connected to this uh, pharmaceutical company that puts out this abortion pill called Mephes Pristone, uh, that she has co-authored eight published scientific papers produced by this giant uh, pharmaceutical company to promote these abortion pills. And they have a huge annual sale of uh, 260 million, $216 million. And they're in panic because this will impact them if Mr. Kavanaugh should be confirmed. But Carol told me that you work with doctors who can actually reverse that pill. Is that true? Absolutely. Dr. George Delgado in San Diego uh, is a personal friend of mine, and he's come up with the abortion pill reversal. Never and heard of been, it. Uh, he's been highly successful. He's literally gone uh, around the world with it, not just here in America. George has actually gone you know, overseas with this. And so, yes, these options are available, but will you hear about them? No. Will mainstream media talk about it? No. Mm -hmm. But it is clearly available and it is saving lives today. Isn't that wonderful? And you know, I'm sure you're aware of the movie Roe v. Wade that's due out this fall by uh, the director is Nick Loeb. I hope to have those folks on to help them promote that movie, to educate Educate women. Walter, I really believe that women have been told uh, a falsehood about when life really began. They are told this is just a little piece of protoplasm. It's not a big deal to take this and just scoop it away. But there's so many women who later on, the numbers in suicide and alcohol and drug addiction tell me quite another story. Absolutely. On my website, we have a page in our library. And let me get our website real quick. It's yeah, issues, do. Issuesforlife.org. Okay. And we've got a link on the first floor about when does life begin. And it's been clear. It's been clear medically, scientifically. It, it's been clear for years when does life begin. The problem is now they're trying to ignore the science. And they're having a very, very difficult time doing that. So what we've done at the Issues for Life Foundation is work with a group called the Katen Project, and they're embryologists, human embryologists, who specialize in when life began. And they have brought to life all the data that we've embraced for years. So there's no question about when life began. You know, uh, I watched The Silent Scream with Dr. Nathanson, who had been responsible for so many abortions. And yet, when technology reached a point where he could actually see what was going on inside of that womb, Walter, he did a complete 180. He he became a pro-lifer. He never did an abortion again, ever. And in making that film, the doctors who participated also never did another abortion. So it is about educating people about the truth, getting our women to see what really goes on in that womb with that child. And it's chilling, Walter. That silent scream film to me was a real eye-opener. My goodness, being able to literally what's going on in the womb is eye-opening, it's chilling, and it's life-changing. It literally affected my life. It was one thing to, to know uh, we had a child on the way, but to literally hold uh, my son in the palm of my hand weighing 1.9 and literally seeing his eyes and his ears. I mean, Georgia, he looked like me. And at that point, mm -hmm. it was clear to me he was indeed his own living, breathing human being. Oh, that's really, that gives me the chills, Walter. What I would also like us to talk about, Walter, which we also never, ever hear, how many botched abortions go on? You know, they cover that up, too. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I remember working on a project where we lost Tanya Reed to a botched abortion and how the abortion industry literally lied and covered up. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many uh, cases and instances where women have been horribly hurt, maimed, and in many cases, uh, they can no longer have children in the future. And yes. that's when you start running out of Kleenex. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just not enough to manage the tears. And see, we never hear those stories, Walter. We never hear those stories. Walter, I have a question for you. In the case of right. rape or incest, what are your thoughts about abortion? Oh my goodness. That's a uh, tough question. No, well, it is. It is. And first let me say this. Our heart goes out to those that are having to face 
that situation. But Georgia, let me tell you, my wife is a product of Ray. And I'm telling you, uh, really? when I'm talking with her, oh yeah, when I'm, when I'm talking to her, when I'm watching her talk with uh, other women, it's very clear that that child still has a right to life. When I look at what God has been able to, to use my wife to accomplish and what her life has meant, uh, it's, it's just very clear that we grossly underestimate the value of life. And so uh, my wife and I, we're no exceptions, pro-lifers, all life is valued. Well, thank you for that, Walter. Oh. How do we move past abortion? Oh, I think that's what he's doing, but go ahead, Walter. Wait, that's a mistake. Yeah. Well, yes, I do appreciate the, the gravity uh, and the weight of the question. But abortion is, is a spiritual issue, in my opinion. We've got to get back to the point where we value human life. We got to get to the point where we're not talking about, well, if a human life costs a lot of money, maybe we ought to end it. What are we talking about here? We're talking about human life. There's just no value that we could put up on that. And that means that everybody needs to be a part of the equation uh, that solves the problem. So if a young woman is in a situation where she's considering an abortion, wouldn't it be great if the whole community would come around and support her? There's already a lot of support around her, but imagine if the community came around, which is what used to happen years ago. Indeed, indeed. We've got to get back to respecting human life. Do you think they'll eventually stop them? Absolutely. I have no question about that. But I can tell you about some of the programs that we're using that have successfully moved a black leadership from A to D. And so God is moving in a way that we've never seen before. So I'm, I'm absolutely certain that one day we will see abortion on demand in America come to an end. Thank you, Bill, for the question, and thank you for that answer, Walter. And I want to thank you, Walter, for being my guest today, for gracing us here with your presence to talk about the great work that you are doing, because I do believe education is the key to helping women understand the truth. We appreciate so much what you're doing. May God bless you and your wife in this important ministry. Your website, again, is... Issues, the number four, life. Issuesforlife.org. Okay. Issues, the number four, life.org. Thank you. That's it. All right. Thank you, Walter. And we'll look forward to talking again. Thank you so much for being here today. And Walter, before you go, uh, my name's Sam Quentin. I'm uh, George's sidekick. And I would just like to say thank you for your dedicated efforts to end abortion. I hope you're successful. We're going to keep an eye on you and root for the best. And let's stay in touch, Walter. We'd love to have you back. My goodness. All right, me anytime. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Walter. We want to thank you all for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the show. Everybody have a great weekend. But don't go away just yet. Stay tuned. Flight 1080 is coming up next. You've been listening to KSCO Santa Cruz. Freedom. Talking about